Hello and welcome to another episode of the Comedy Defects Podcast. This is episode 77. I'm sorry it's late, guys. I know this is towards the end of the month of August, but the problem was I had so much happening this month. It was my birthday at the start of the month. I ate lots of cake. I ate a kind of cake that I took a bite out of and nearly broke my teeth and the other teeth that didn't break nearly rotted in my head because it was so sugary. It was like, you know, it was just a bit too much that cake was. But so I've been, I've been sort of not just eating cake. I've had a lot of acting stuff happen as well. A lot of voiceover stuff happen. And things have been going well, but just been really, really busy, which in a good way. But, but I got some good news. The gig that I opened up before the lockdown five months ago in Abbots Langley is happening again. We're starting it. We're just igniting the little spark of joy in that venue again. The new manager talked to me and said, oh, we can get 25 people in. That's not bad. We can build it up from there, get people to know about it, and then bring their friends. And then when all this crap blows over, we can start actually filling rooms and having a proper gigs again. That'd be great. The first gig is on the 13th of October. Let's not forget to plug it. 13th of October, the Henderson Hub in Abbots Langley. Show starts at eight o'clock, doors open at half past seven. The headliner is the fantastic Sean Mio. He's excellent. I say, guys, I'm really sorry this podcast is late. I'm going to make this intro really short because I am knackered. I've got loads of things to do. I've got to finish off film tomorrow. Uh, I've got oh, loads of things happening, but it's good, good, good stuff, good stuff, you know, positivity, you know, trying to stay on top of it and just get everything done, you know, hope you guys are having a good time and things are starting to ease for you as well and, you know, you've got the masks for each outfit you've got uh, the, <laughs> just to match everything up again, you know, say you can't go more than three colours, that's fine, yes, well, okay, three colours, like a flag, I guess, but look, digressing heavily, this is episode 77 of the Comedy Effect podcast and with a good friend of mine, Cy Deves, he is a very funny comic. He's only been going about five years, but he has, I think he's found his persona. He's anxious and he will talk about it in the show. Go find him on all the social medias, Cy, S-I-D-E-A-V-E-S, Cy Deves on all of the social media, CyDeves.com for his website, for his gig dates and everything like that, if he's got any coming up at the moment. Uh, so this is episode 77. I'm going to make this short and sweet, guys. If you want to donate to the podcast, you can. Go to Patreon, type in The Comedy Defect Podcast, and donate if you want. Why not? Like, just chance it. And uh, we're once a month. This is within the month of August, so I will be once a month because I've got so much other things on. But you can donate there. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. I'm there, at Winter Dominus, uh, because no one could pronounce my last name, so I decided to put Dominus at the end. I did it before I saw the show unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, you know, with uh, Titus Andromeda. And I was like, oh man, I'm, I'm Titus Andromeda. My winter dominance is my handle on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter at Joker underscore season. That's where I'm there because I thought I'd make it all different to keep you confused. So this is episode 77 with the hilarious Cy Deves. I hope you enjoy it. Go find him. Go check him out. Go see him live. Enjoy. Sai Deeps, welcome to the Comedy Defect. Thank you for coming to my uh, cabin slash shipping container, which is Thank 22 you. foot by 8 foot. Yeah. And uh, you're sitting on the left-hand side when you come in. Uh, stage right. Stage right. Yeah. How are well, you, thanks, thanks for having me, Winter Dominus. Yeah, which, no, just winter. Just, you just winter. <laughs> just don't, you don't have to... You've the started it now. No, you just call me Mr. Dominus then, okay, oh, if you're going to oh, call me. I'm very well, thank you. Yeah. yeah really well. Yeah, how, how are you? I'm I'm too good, really. I don't think I'm too good for comedy right now. Too good. I'm too happy. I too oh, right. I, thought, yeah. I thought you meant like I'm too good for comedy. No, like, I'm so no fucking funny right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I don't like to break. Do you know, genuinely, I've been concerned that I'm too happy to be doing yeah. comedy in a minute, mm. but I think it's helped me find a different level. Mm. I, you know, I do different things. I don't. I, I don't think I have to enter my persona more. Which is sort of you know like a little bit awkward, but that's not the thing. Is it's not my persona. That's still who I am as a person, mm. and that's what I've always done. Is just represent myself as a person because I'm happy. I don't have to enter that more. Like I'm still anxious, and I still have that on tap. I I feel like I'm still just being genuinely me. I'm just talking about slightly different things. Do you find that the more you do comedy, the less anxious you're getting? Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that bad, though? So do you have to take a break to find your voice again? <laughs> uh, no, I just take bigger and bigger steps in life that make okay. me more anxious. All right, like what, what's, what's next? Heroin? Well, <laughs> yes, that, no, I've done that. No, no, oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, as, as, well, welcome to heroin as discussed on... Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> the Naked Heroin Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. As discussed on my podcast, I'm not a drugsman, so... Right. No, so, her- heroin, not something I've... So, how about, uh, like, Nurofen? I'm just going to, like, do one more I, Nurofen. I limit myself to uh, just one every 20 minutes. So. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. That's, a, yeah, that's enough. And take the edge off. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. And one shot of vodka with it, just to, you know, wash it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just, uh, just a, a, a quick hit on the old crack pipe. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, just to be sociable. Just right? to let, mellow me out. Sorry. Take one edge off, put another edge on. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's yeah. true. You know, you're different, different strokes for different folks. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, no. So I'm, I'm, I'm constantly anxious. So no, it's right. fine. I just, just as a person. Have you always been anxious as a kid as well? I think so. Right. Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, sister. Well, sister, one and a half sisters. Are they anxious too? I don't know. <laughs> just say many so. So like, does your family just walk into rooms and go look, look at each other awkwardly? No, I think leave? I think it's I think it's just me. Is it just you, right? Yeah. But do you, do you know, what? I I used to be, I used to be really shy. Yeah. I'm really, really shy. I had a friend that wasn't shy. And I used to watch him be incredibly outgoing and, and extrovert. Right. And I'm like, I want to be like that. Yeah, yeah. And then I was like, and I was like, so I watched him for ages and I was like, oh, and then finally I had some stories to tell. Then I started telling the stories. Right. And then... They were his stories. No, they were my stories. They were still, <laughs> so we, we, sometimes we were in the same place. Right. So they were our stories. Okay. You know, so coming to comedy and, and, and stuff like that. To the, the, when I, I, I knew that I was funny yeah. in, in telling stories I remember I was at a, a place a, a little town in Skull which is just on the road from Skibbering 20 miles or so and I was there was, was sitting around this tiny little table and we were, I, was, I had all these stories kept catalogued you know right. I, knew, I told them at parties all the time yeah, yeah, and yeah. I had them down there were some funny bits and I had the energy and I was like yeah here we go and I told these stories back to back and I got a round of applause. I didn't know what to do with it, what, what to do next, though. Well, so like, start, conversationally. Where, yeah, where do I go with this? You got applause. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, wait, because I was like hammered. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, come on, like telling stories in the pub, like a crazy person. You Spectacular. Know? Yeah, just like full on, you know, crazy. Yeah. And like, so, and I got a round of applause. I said to my mate, did you see that? I got, what is that? I got a round of applause. I got, people were clapping. What is that? I didn't, know, I didn't even know what a round of applause was. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I didn't know where to go from that. But, but you, you do comedy. How long have you done comedy? Uh, just over five years. And uh, w- what made you want to get into it? Uh, I just always liked comedy. That's, that's it, really. I just, I just always enjoy it. But, like, I worked in theatre... I worked at the one theatre for eight years and mm. then sort of continued to work right. um, in, like, sort of technical theatre. The one theatre, is it called? Or is it no. the one it was theater? Actually, well, it was two theatres. Right, what's um, the name of theatres? It's the uh, Cliff Pavilion in Southend, right. well, Westcliff, and uh, the Palace Theatre, also in oh, Westcliff. Nice. But everyone only knows it as Southend. Southend is technically the smallest town in the area, but oh. because of the pier, it has the uh, importance. Right. So you've worked in the, the best place then as well? Best yeah, that is it's pretty good actually. Yeah, it's 2600 seater. Wow. Theatre. I saw everyone there. So there were comedy clubs that run downstairs. There's, yeah. a, there's a curb club that runs down there. Oh, right. Um, no, there's one other club that used to run there. So Joker, Joker Club used to run there. Now yeah. that runs sort of elsewhere. But when that was running there... Uh, and it was being run by someone else at the time when I was still working there. I was doing like sound tech, like the bar staff adjusted the lights, and I just sat there under the desk and sort of nice. did did volumes and that. But I, I, I just remember because I like I say I always enjoyed comedy. I went to go and watch a, a comedy club in town. Like there was only mm. one that I really knew of, and my friend uh, regularly booked a table out and sort of loads of us went to see it. And I'd go down there like sort of nearly nearly every month and mm. uh, like watch loads of stuff. And there was loads of people there. It turns out the regular MC there was Russell Kane. Oh yeah, but like I, I just, wow. before I knew who he was. Yeah, and like yeah. they had Simon Evans and uh, Andrew Lawrence and sort of just cool. lo- loads of like huge people who were sort of like you know they were still just sort of making it at the mm. time. But yeah, so I just saw like loads of amazing people and I just I really enjoyed that and really enjoyed watching it. Mm. it never occurred to me that I could do it myself. Mm. But then working at the theatres as well, I saw. Like so, like the little theatre we had tour shows, uh, the likes of like Idle O'Hanlon and um, Andy Parsons Great. and uh, who's your hero Jeff when Rowe. you first started? When I first, oh well, when I first started, I think at the time I was still massively and still am like I still love him. Uh, I really, really love David O'Doherty. Yeah, which I don't think translates to what I do at all, mm. but I just I just loved it mm. and it's incredible. And now I would say it's uh, James Acaster who does somewhat translate to what I do. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, it's, it's different enough, which has, has come up before. Cause it's I've awkwardness, this... isn't it? It's an awkward, yeah. awkwardness, in, controlled awkwardness in for sure. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Kind of just, yeah, like playing on that. It's quite funny because I notice it within my friends. 
where they'd start gigging loads with like one person. Like, I, I won't give examples. Um, yeah, be me. I mean, I know you, I know who, I yeah, know yeah. people you could get. And like, so they'd, they'd be gigging loads for like with one person, yeah. and they start like you, you see <laughs> them start developing those traits, yeah, and then course. like kind of one other person would start watching a lot of another person, yeah. and they start developing those traits. Yeah. And I got worried because I noticed sort of similarities behaviourally between myself and James Acaster. Mm. And I was, don't get me wrong, because like I'm still very different, and I'm nowhere near as good. Mm. I'm, I'm still fucking good, but that, <laughs> no, <laughs> um, but like, and I just got worried that everyone would be looking at that, going like, he's just trying to be James Acaster, mm. and that's absolutely not the case. It's just what I came to realise recently. I had a bit of a revelation that sort of made mm. me feel better about it, and just like I, I embraced it in myself. Is that like you watch comedy that resonates with who mm. you are? Yeah. And sometimes, like watching comedy or watching a personality that's like that of yourself, mm-hmm. you won't be stealing things from them, but it will make you realise things about yourself mm. are acceptable. Yeah. And so it will sort of help to sponge out the bits about yourself that you like. So mm-hmm. you create the version of yourself that you want to be. Yeah. And that's all that is. And that's, it's not, you're not stealing stuff from other people. Some people do. Yeah. Don't get me no, wrong. Plainly. A lot of the time it's sort of, it's not even going like, oh, I'm inspired by that. I want to be like that. That's going, I am that and mm. it's okay. Mm-hmm. So that's, so yeah. That, that's, yeah you can be, uh, you learn, don't lift, isn't it? Be absolutely. Yeah, 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 that's what it is. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's absolutely, um, I think it's, I think it, it's just most important to watch other, other styles that are not like you and, that are similar to you and go oh, okay right this this is what has been done absolutely and you go oh that it, it can be done yeah and, and you so you everyone comes up comes up with you you know that's yeah. it is and so you're always trying to push it like similarly with that like kind of working in the big theatre like because at the time like when Ardlo Handlin came through I loved him like he's still incredible obviously mm-hmm. but that was massive for me and I really loved it but then when I was working at the big theatre as well you have we, a Dougal-esque about you as well to be fair <laughs> I mean well, not, 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 not uh, backhand it's compliment, slight, but it's, it's like yeah, a, yeah. oh yeah like there's a sort of um, okay. confusion yeah, like yeah. a huge look on your on your demeanour yeah you know that's, what I, that's how I like to carry myself because yeah. it's sort of a weird thing I, I've developed a bit of a reputation for myself like a lot of people know me for doing stuff about grammar mm-hmm. and so like I always get tagged in sort of stuff about grammar on, online kind of it's quite funny is I, I wrote a bit about this a little while ago and I've, I've only done it once and I need to do it more that someone like you know how when people are sort of like teaching their kids control and they're just like oh mm-hmm. well, you want to stay in bed at night if I was a buggy man I'll get you and that's the like they'll stay in bed now like they're not going to get out because they're mm-hmm. scared of being caught by the buggy man a mate of mine like someone had made like a huge grammatical error and someone said, oh, watch out, side these will get you. And it tagged me in it as well. Like, I'm now the grammar bogeyman. Oh, right. <laughs> Just, nice. Like, I'm, I'm now being a... Like, I'm... He's the one being the dick, yeah. but I'm now the scapegoat. Right, <laughs> Just the like, gra- watch out, he'll get you. You are the grammar police. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Wow. Um, but, okay. like, with that... Got a niche. Got a thing. Yeah. Got a thing. But I don't, I, I, I'm not even that bad. It's just I've developed this reputation for myself, so I've, I've just sort of settled into it. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's who I am now. Nice. Um, a few of my friends sort of know, know me to be sort of reasonably mm. intelligent. And I, I don't, I, there's no way of saying this without sounding like I'm just trying to brag. But like, no, brag away, mate. Yeah. This is great. <laughs> uh, but a lot, of, a, lot, yeah. a lot of my friends just sort of... Sorry, that sounds horrible now. It sounds like a lot of my friends get together and go, oh, should we ask for clever one? That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> but everyone's got, a, you are, everyone's got like a, a person in the group that need, is good at one thing, right? You yeah. Need person, you need the jock, right? For like, you know, it's, a, it's Saturday night, some shit's gone down, right? Yeah. Get the jock in, you need the brains, your brains, right? Okay, it's a bit like... I do uh, some brain stuff. Like, like Thunderbirds. Yeah. Like Thunderbirds, right? They got, you need a tech guy. Like, it's like a SEAL team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Tech yeah. guy, uh, uh, wet guy. I'm not the, I'm not, not wet, you know, we're not wet guy, but you know what I mean, like a wet, yeah, 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 yeah. wetsuit yeah. guy, you know, the, the guy with diving. Oh, I thought you yeah. meant like an you're, assassin, man. Have you ever seen Centurions? The Centurions. No. They go to Power Extreme and they got like these mad robotic cartoon, one of my favorite cartoons. It's okay. like Cartoon Network years ago. And like basically they go Power Extreme, they'd like get like, uh, they'd be a vehicle, a land vehicle, a, a submarine, a, a guy that could like, fly with like all these mad um, right. add-ons that you could put onto like a, a exo suit which you just clip brilliant, oh, okay. brilliant. Just basically you need all those, all those facets that you know of yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the group maybe four or five maximum we need a kettle I've got one like a wingman for every situation basically yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what we need um, yeah anyway so yeah nice. a kettle would be good so, uh, tea, tea guy yeah, yeah. Mr. T 
Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's where it came from. Nailed it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you are the brains of the of Right, yeah. So I've, look, I've got this sort of reputation well. for myself. Does everyone else have glasses in the group? Yeah, some people. Uh, you need, These are new. You need to kill them. You need, I, to, kill, you yeah. need to get rid of those guys. Yeah. But I've, I've only just started wearing glasses. Right. And I think it's affected my comedy, comedy it positively. Of yeah. course it does. Your yeah. weakness. And like right. I, had, I had no idea. But I was having this conversation with my agent the other day. He was like, oh, so like, how, how's it going? I was like, I'm just, I'm just like doing, I'm really good at the minute. Like I'm, I, just, I feel really funny. And he's like, oh, you, what, what are you doing differently? And I was like, I'm ab- absolutely nothing. Like I'm sure I'm not doing anything differently, but people are sort of getting better reactions. And mm. and then I suddenly went, oh wait, that started happening when I got new glasses. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think my glasses are... Sure, weakness, that's what it is. Yeah. It's like people feel sorry for you, got weak eyes. Yeah. It's like, oh, he's got a disability. This guy. Little do they know that it is much worse than they think it is. Yeah, that's it. Well, you could just have a little t shirt that says that. I think my glasses are bad. I've actually got this thing. Yeah, I've yeah. nearly went I've blind. actually got someone else's cornea wow. <laughs> hand stitched into my eye. Wow. Uh, so, is, are they dead? I hope so. Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise they're going to be annoyed and coming after me. Yeah, well, well to be fair, like, you'd be able to dodge them pretty well, though, wouldn't you? If you got, haven't got enough yeah. of sight anymore. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, I was actually blind in that eye for a week oh. when my cornea melted. Yeah. Woo! Oh shit, how does that, how does that, it's not bad. No, you just got to turn your head slightly further to see that way. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's all it is, really. Everyone always says, like, oh, your depth perception goes, and, like, I, that affected me, like, once. Yeah, but it's not that bad. It, all, all you've got to do is, like, your peripheral vision's cutting off, so you've just got to turn your head slightly further to see the other side. Right. That's it. I mean, we were talking about earlier, I was saying it could be a fringe show. I, I don't really do fringe shows that are sad that much. I just do fringe shows now that are funny. Yeah. And like, because I don't, the only problem I've got is eczema and it's not, doesn't work the show <laughs> for like an hour. Yeah. You know, so I think it's, it's a funny, through three lines at the top of the show, this show is not about any of those things, but yeah. you know, it's apart from that. Sponsored by E45. Cool. <laughs> but yeah, like, you, what could your, what could your, what could yours be? Sponsored by Optrix, maybe? Uh, well, maybe, yeah. That'd be good, man. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, because I mean, all I've got, is, a, I've got a title for the show just in case I what, do it. What is it? Right, obviously my name, Cy. Yeah. So, Cy hyphen Clops. It's nice. Cy Clops. I like that. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Is the show going to be like, how am I, you're okay now or did it affect you is, is there nothing that the well I don't know problem? because I've, I've I've now got a cataract so I've got to have cataract surgery in uh, like a few months oh, wow the story's not written yet yeah the story's still I mean, being written you know you were looking forward to the, like <laughs> looking forward to the, the cataract in your old age but now you've got it now so. <laughs> yeah 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 so uh, my brother-in-law asked like did you get the cornea of an, uh, of an octogenarian I was like I may have yeah wow <laughs> change your perspective on everything yeah. but it's just because of uh, the because uh, I've been on a steroid drop uh, for such a long time, like so, you have to take loads of different eye drops, and right. this one is so that the cornea doesn't reject. Okay, right, right, uh, nice. That'd be annoying if your the cornea rejected you, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's that. That'd be ultimate rejection. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to see you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> 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 I think we need to see different people. Ah, uh, oh, better stop. I better no, stop. Yeah, yeah, before uh, I go home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You've oh. written measured measured up, isn't it? Measured up. Your show, your shows. No, your shows. I see how you got there. Uh, the size matters. Oh god! Yeah. Damn, I keep seeing the ruler. I'm like measuring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, yeah. it's a great no, the whole poster. Stuff. Oh, thanks, it's man. It's a great poster. Did you make that yourself? Uh, no, a friend of well, I, I came up with a concept, but mm. a friend of mine. Sort of put it together for me. It's all right. It's still great. It's yeah. still a great idea. I think you, you just sometimes you just don't have the, the skills to put it. Stuff. It's hard. That's that's it. Like I, I sort of did a rudimentary version that was a bit crap, and yeah. I, I went to my friend who made my last poster as well, mm. and I said to him, "Oh, can you do this? Like this is sort of what I want to do." And he said, "I'm not sure that's possible," and mm. it absolutely smashed it out of the park. Nice. It's incredible. A guy called Neil Whitehead uh, yeah. is a, an incredible graphic designer. Right. So if you need any graphic design work done go go to him he's, uh, he's extremely busy so he probably can't do it but yeah. he's very good your second show is what now you... but it will be about sort of perfectionism and stuff like that ok because okay, you're very nervous and anxious yeah. it's got a kind of Woody Allen type thing about you but like you know with the, well, especially with the glasses now yeah. I mean, that kind of just sorts the whole thing all, all together right yeah and uh, I've just I've just uh, become Jewish so. have you right no. I've you, had enough know... cut out of me recently so oh, right. yeah <laughs> that's true just the eye yeah yeah do. Uh, did you take any medication for being anxious no no have you ever no no just the heroin yeah just, yeah, the heroin. Yeah. just smoke a bit of heroin was, in the morning. um i can't remember who it was i heard someone on a podcast recently talking about exactly that retin or something was it that's for adhd is it it's like 
calm you down as well? Possibly. Yeah, I think it I might have like, mm. both effects. And I, I was of the same school of thought as, uh, I think it's Susan Kalman, actually, was saying mm. that she, like, she embraces her depression and stuff like that. For the record, like, I, 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 I'm over my depression. Oh, um, you had depression, okay. Yeah, uh, did do, but it's, it's, it's a long story. It's basically the birth of my nephew sort of melted what I like, always refer to as uh, the emotional dam. Okay. So, like, it's the day that I held him. This, uh, this is the thing that I did in my first show. It's the day that I held him. This emotional dam essentially sort of just melted away and broke through. And, like, all these emotions that I wasn't aware I hadn't been experiencing, mm. all of a sudden I was experiencing them. Mm. But because I didn't know what to do with them, they were all coming through at once. Wow. And, uh, like, this is sort of, this is where the joke led to and but it's like it came from a sort of genuine place in that like all of a sudden I found myself uh, capable of dealing with like just uh, uh, feeling so many different emotions that like they'd all hit me all at once and it was confusing I didn't know what to do with that yeah. many emotions and I just cried and I didn't know why so like that was where the joke went is that yeah. uh, like I'd just be sort of watching uh, like bargain hunt and just I'd start crying it's like oh, I've got no business acumen yeah. uh, and yeah. like I, I, I once saw an old man uh, walked out of a little corner shop and he was just carrying a little tin of kidney beans and he looked so happy and I was just like I don't know why that makes me sad but well, no, I don't I th- d- d- don't think it was sad like I just, I just like, got really emotional and just I was connecting like experiencing joy in every single moment yeah 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 well that's uh, and, that, and that made you depressed no I was depressed before I was depressed before the, but the nephew came made you come out of the depression yeah it, it made me start feeling emotions that I wasn't aware that I wasn't feeling before oh wow so, like, I think I was in a little bit of denial a lot about it. A little bit, a lot. How, how <laughs> I mean, old were you when that happened? happened? How old were you when that happened? 20, how old is he now? Uh, he's turning four this year, so uh, 29. Right. So I'd already started yeah. comedy at that point. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that that sort of age, you start to, your self-awareness starts to really kick in, I think, around yeah. that age. Yeah. Of like 29, 30, you just like, you're going to go clunk, clunk, oh, oh, I haven't been dealing with anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At all. Like, that was it, but I, like, I thought I'd be doing okay. Yeah. And I was Shot aware that there was like, I was aware that there was like a sort of a thing there, but I, ne- I just never dealt with it. But it was mm-hmm. also the thing, this is this is how I got to it, is Susan Kalman was basically saying like she embraces it mm-hmm. and like she wants it there because she likes how her brain works. Mm-hmm. And that was what I used to think as well until I sort of I got over it and suddenly went, Oh shit! No, that's uh, actually this is pretty good. <laughs> and, like, it turned, funny enough, it turned. So I didn't want to take like uh, antidepressants because yeah. I knew that that would uh, not all together. Yeah, and I I was worried that if I started taking that, like I, I know that my brain does pretty interesting things, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to risk stopping that yeah. from happening. Turns out that's not a thing at all. Yeah. But thankfully, I got over it naturally, yeah. and my brain continued doing fucking mental things mm. that I could use and really enjoy and it's great, great. And so my, my brain's a bit odd and it's, it's, good. it's a cool place to be that's good yeah because the danger is that you don't want to be you don't want to be completely numb and cut off because you can't you, do, well, you just can't feel anything absolutely that's it. Those, and all those things like Prozac and all those they just bring you down and yeah and that was that's the edge I, just, I didn't want to do that because like I knew as much as I did get sort of like horrendously sad like I knew that <laughs> like the, the the high moments and like the cool stuff that mm. my brain does I just didn't want to risk losing that, mm. so I just I stayed away from it. But it turns out, actually, if I got help earlier on, it, it probably would have been better sooner. <laughs> <laughs> I can do so this myself. That is, that is, again, do you know what? Because there's been a lot of talk about like you know mental mm. health and that in the past few years, and that's why like I'm such a big advocate now of like meditation and stuff because mm. that's really helped me as well. Additionally, like kind of after my nephew as well, like my life has changed sort of quite dramatically in the past few years in that like so a year and a half ago I met my girlfriend mm. and that's changed my life as well mm. like for the for the better obviously like it's, it's incredible like I've, I've properly fell in love for the first time good god it's does great, this mate. normally happen on this it's absolutely fine mate um, this is absolutely fine this is your life mate it's, yeah this is I mean not, not that I have a book here there's a red book over there I need to hold the book this is your life Dun, nah, yeah no no really it, that's that's wonderful no, you're really happy yeah and, and we're talking about like so we're saying basically saying that we might be too happy for comedy. Yeah, but I'm not at all. No, I, <laughs> no sure, I, I, it's, it's, it's that's important. the funny thing is yeah. because obviously, like, there's, it's such a sort of like manly masculine thing. Like, oh no, don't talk about your fucking emotions. And no, no do it, man. Like, Ooh. it's all right actually. <laughs> Turns out life's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, like if you if you allow it to be. Yeah, to let go uh, and just yeah. Allow. 
Absolutely. And now I'm just, I'm, I'm still really happy and I'm still being really creative. Yeah, it's great. And you can have joy in the creativity of the whole thing. It's like, you know, it's like, oh, God, I, did, I, I made that. I did it. I yeah. did it. I, 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 can, I know I can fix this. I know how to fix this now. Because at the beginning, like you said, you worked in theatre. Did you act in drama in school as well? or? or? No, no. I, f- I fell into that job by accident. Mm. I, I always enjoyed like sort of drama and stuff and I always studied uh, music. So like music is my... Yeah. My, my first love before comedy but uh, well I say that as in that is the thing that I fell in love with first creatively because I discovered that I could like I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good at drums uh, like I, I love the way I you do the comedy that the, 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 most people like, com- comedians just constantly rechecking themselves going I'm I can't say I'm really good at something yeah. because my ego will not let me. I need to be the most humble. I, like, <laughs> I know, I get, so you're really good at drums, right? Were you in a band? What was the band you're in? Um, well, I've played in bands, but nothing that did much. So nothing, well, nothing that you've heard of. What was your first band? Oh, Christ. Uh, I played bass in a band called Diver. Right. <laughs> no, cool. It's uh, terrible. It's like yeah, no, it's it's right. It's good. It's really good fun. Yeah, uh, like we just played like grunge music. Cool. Some Pearl Jam S. Nice. Uh, so that was fun. Yeah. Good to um, be part of something though, isn't it? Like a, a, a yeah. team, you know, right on on your own up there, man. You're on your own up there with us. The yeah. Army sometimes. Like. That's the funny thing. Is like so uh, after that, I uh, I just uh, I solely played drums in bands and right. still like occasionally played bass and stuff. I'm pretty reasonable bassist. I'm not again, and I'm not being humble. Like I'm I'm not great. But like I, I can get by. Yeah, good. Um, I I am a good drummer, so like I'm happy <laughs> enough to say that. <laughs> good drummer, you like you. You start your first yes. love, and then so. But like that's the thing. I spent so much time in bands where like I tried writing solo music, and like I just I found it too hard, and I couldn't do it. And like I know, it was, I knew I knew that it wasn't great. Like it's alright, and I still enjoy it, and I still write songs, and I still sort of play stuff. But like I know that it's not the best that I can be. And then, like I, I just, I just wanted something where, cause as the drummer in that band, like the singer was like not a dictator as such, but he was sort of like in charge, and that was his thing, which is fine. But he was always just there. I just wanted more creative input, or like just to be mm. this. Like I've got a thing. I've got a thing that we, I, I can do. Like, and I want, I want to be able to do this. And like, I just felt like I never had that sort of ability to do it. So, like, mm. I've been watching comedy for years and I really enjoyed comedy. Mm. Like I said, I was still working in theatre at the time that I was in that band. So, playing-wise, I've done more session work in, than, than stuff in bands. So, like, just sort of, like, recording with uh, people and, like, theatre work, like, pit stuff, which is very good fun. I really mm. enjoy that. It's just a, a very niche set of skills that mm. I just, I, I, I fucking love. I've, I've been watching comedy for years, like I say, and, like, and I, I sort of half thought in the back of my head for years, like, I really want to do comedy. And I remember, because, like, like I say, I saw loads of people. So uh, that's what I was saying earlier. And I this is a, a good time to close the point from earlier. Uh, in the big theatre, we had everyone coming through. Uh, so, like, Jimmy Carr would come through, like, three times a year ish, if not more. Uh, Bill Bailey, Dara O'Brien. Mm. Big acts, mm. like, amazing acts. And Lee Evans, because he's from down the road. Right. He would go there to try out his new material. So he booked it out for three nights, 2,600 seater, sold out for three nights, like immediately, not even doing a tour show, just doing new stuff. He was there with a bit of paper on stage. Yeah. And like to see him working mm-hmm. like that has informed my, like if, it, if ever I get to a time where I'm like, oh, I don't know if I look professional enough. I'm like, no, he sold out a theater mm-hmm. for three nights mm-hmm. with a bit of paper. So don't get me wrong. He's incredible, and like mm. even his shit ideas were incredible ideas. Mm. So I, I got to see him doing that, and like I got to spend a little time with him, and talk to him. And um, so like before that, when I was, I was working in a different department in the theatre, because I, I worked in about three different departments at the mm. same time, because uh, it was poor. And uh, I remember turning to a group of the guys that I was working with once, and I said like, oh, I really, really fancy just try and stand up comedy. Like mm. I, I, I think it'd be really good. And uh, one of them turned to me and said, but you're not funny. Uh, so I didn't do comedy for about four years after oh, that. <laughs> no. Not um, yet. Not funny yet. Yeah. You know, that's it. And then kept thinking about it. So like in a club downstairs, there was, I, I, I always vividly remember, there were like a couple of guys, there were three guys on like open and middle closer. 
and the middle was Nathan Caton. And I just remember watching him and he smashed it so much harder than the other two guys to the extent that I've got no idea who the other two guys were. Mm-hmm. And they're probably like massive TV mm-hmm. names now, but I mean, Nathan Caton is. But I just remember watching him going, <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's amazing because he was so good, yeah, like so just phenomenal. And I was like, "Oh, that's incredible!" But like, I was, I was, I was never watching people doing comedy, mm. thinking I could do that. Mm. I was watching it going, "I think I've got something." Like, not like because there's a, a lot of people would watch comedy and be like, "I can do better than that." Mm. Like, I can do better. And that was never me. I was always just watching it, thinking, "Oh, well, I think I've got an interesting angle that I mm. could put to something." Like you know, I, 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 that per, that thing that that person's talking about, I know full well that I've got different perspective on yeah. that. And at the time, I didn't realise it was because I'm a bit weird. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I just I just felt like I thought slightly differently, and yeah. I, I do. But yeah. so yeah, and I just like I just fancied like being sort of have, having that opportunity to take creative control, which mm. I never got in the band. Yeah, and I thought I want to be able to do that on stage and like take control and and just be like here's my thoughts and here's these mm. things that we all think about, but this is the way that I think about them, which I think might be slightly different than how some of you think about them mm. based on conversations that I've had. In part. So yeah, I went out there and like, and I just I said stuff the first time. And uh, Where was your gig, first gig, and what was the date? Uh, it was the oh shit, uh, 14th of March, 2014. Uh, is that right? <laughs> I forgot what year it was then. Mm. I, was like, I think I've done that wrong. No, that's right. Th- uh, yeah, 14th of March, 2014 at TNT. Oh yeah, but when it was at the Torianos, yeah, Torianos. I used to love Torianos, man. Oh, I said love that gig. It yeah. was so fun. So that was my first ever yeah. gig, and uh, Beck Hill MC'd. Great. Yeah, and there were. And I've looked back on that lineup, and it's like Eureka Katani was mm. there, and I can't remember who else. But like, it, I just remember looking back at that and going, "Holy shit!" Mm. <laughs> there's an there's like, incredible act on there. Yeah, so it was really cool. So I'd started like just putting things together and started writing stuff down just in case I ever got the inkling mm. to go and try it and when Lee Evans was in because he was in for three days like he'd mm. sort of come backstage and he'd make his dinner in our crew mm. room and we'd sort of be hanging out and it's just me and him and we'd chatting and there was no idea that I'd had like buzzing mm. around in my head sort of related to paranoia and I've never done that bit of material on stage but like talking to him yeah just conversationally I saw this opportunity to be like I'm gonna try my material on Lee Evans really? which like generally is like a sort of a horrible Good thing work. but I said this thing and like, and I did make it sort of fit into the conversation and I made him laugh and I just went oh okay I'm gonna go I'm gonna go and try that yeah. <laughs> I think I can do it and I just had a so good first gig nice yeah, yeah. that's it like, really that was your so so was that your first gig with Lee Evans or was it like the the first gig you did the, the, the a gig before and then you took, tried that on Lee Evans no, that so it was before my first gig. Oh, so you tried to get on material with it was, the Evans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It That's was just, a nice little story, man. That's great. It was That's just great. that moment of making him laugh and being mm. like, oh, he has seen a lot of comedy mm. and he just laughed at a thing that I thought of. Great. Fuck it. Forget that guy who told me I wasn't funny. Yeah. I'm going to go and try this. And yes. then I booked a gig like a week later. Great. Wow. Yeah. That's great, man. You, you, so you did drama or anything like that? You, you I did bits of drama. I was in plays in school. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. What were you as? I was uh, Clarence the Ventriloquist Dummy in, oh, right. uh, in Bugsy Malone. Mm. <laughs> the, the character that's not otherwise there. Right. Uh, it's one of those, like, sort of a part was written for the school play. Cool. It's good fun. Like, it was really mm. funny. And uh, I think, I can't remember if I actually acted in anything else, but I just certainly did music in plays and yeah, but that was just, I just remember sort of being on stage and I was like, oh, I want to do more of this, but like I could never get the parts because mm. my teacher, who is now a convicted paedophile, oh, um, shit. Okay. <laughs> so feel, free, feel free to cut that out if you want. Well, um, okay, well, okay, so, no, it's all right, whichever, whichever, yeah. you know, so that, if it's the I'm, truth, it's the truth, isn't it? I've not said his name. Worth bringing up because he was horrible to me in oh, school yeah. and after that, his life got a bit ruined and right. I sort of, and I just remember how horrible to me he was and I just sort of went... Okay. <laughs> comes around, comes around, yeah, there. a little bit of retribution. Wow. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's just horribly wow. cruel, but you're. We're saying you're like happy at the moment. Like you're, you got yeah. your missus now, and like you're you're moving in with her. Yeah, buying a house. Yeah. Buying a house as well after a year and a half. Yeah. God, that's good, man. That's yeah. good going. Well, basically, like she owns her flat at the minute, oh, and yeah. like we really want to live together. Uh, so she lives in Colchester, and I live in Southend. Right. Not Southend, but no one would know where I live. 
so like kind of we have to travel like an hour mm. to see each other like two or three oh, times a week. It's really tough. So we wanted to live together, but she didn't want to go back to renting. So what's well, investment, so, isn't it? Either yeah, way. So yeah, so we're just buying a house. It's so odd because like I've dated. I'm not entirely certain they could call them girlfriends before that. They sort of were really, but like I, I don't, yeah, there were there were two females uh, <laughs> who I'd sort of had like semi serious emotions towards. Mm. Like the thought of sort of being with them in the future was kind of like oh, I don't right. know if that's yeah, that, really. That can happen. And as soon as I met my girlfriend, and I have to say my girlfriend because I, I bleep her name out of my own podcast. Yeah. So as soon as I met her, I just. Like, n- there was nothing that was like, oh, I, I think, um, you know, like, oh, maybe there, we should take some. No it was there's just, no fear. It, yeah, just it, it, it was just right. Great, that felt right. Yeah. That's good, man. It was that, that's important. Yeah. That's a nice one. So, uh, is she in comedy as well or not? No. That's good, isn't it? No, she does. She's a big fan of comedy, though. Oh. So, like, what's nice about that is sometimes I'll talk about, like, real sort of niche comedians that I love. And she's like, oh, yeah, so I'm doing this. And it's like, oh, no. Love you, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's kind of, she's yeah. also much funnier than I am, <laughs> which is a which should be a mine of, inf- of information and comedy as well. Yeah, because yeah. my missus is the same. She, I don't bring her to gigs anymore because uh, she's too deconstructing at home. Yeah, it's like oh, I can't, I can't handle the comedically criticism. astute. Yeah, that's it. Very, very good. But it's it's helpful. It's good to have a soundboard like that, though. Yeah, absolutely. Surely. Yeah. What was the first comedy album or you ever saw or listened to? Oh, good question. I was, I think it. Yeah, it's before I got into comedy. Like, I saw, like, Ross Noble. Yeah. Because he, he was at my theatre. So, like, I saw his full shows. Well, obviously, I saw... Yeah, no, thinking about it now, I've seen, like, like Dario Brie and, and, again... That I was the had first it. one, though. Which was the first? Like, which was the first one that I saw the live? first one you saw live, yeah. Oh, I don't know, You don't man. know? No, because I've seen so many. Right. P- purely because of working in theatre, like, mm-hmm. at, at the time, like, before I sort of really was concentrating on it. And I think I... I think I was, anyway. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I think it may have been Jimmy Carr, oh, right. regardless, because mm-hmm. he, he goes there all the time. Because the man never stops touring. I think, yeah, I think it may have been Jimmy Carr. It may, it may have been someone else. I got to see uh, the late Ken Dodd twice. Oh, yeah. God, how long were the shows? I won the sweepstake the second time. So, yeah, nice. uh, within the entire theatre, everyone put in a pound. Yeah, I won, I won the second Good time. Good work. At, like, I think it was like three and a half hours. Wow. Yeah. But like it was sort of on what time it finished. So I yeah. think it finished at quarter to twelve, and started at like eight, half seven, eight, mm-hmm. something like that. And there was an interval, but for what that was worth. What was your biggest high in comedy so far? Um, I will never forget. I played a Chesham Comedy Club, huh? and like I was just in a uh, middle ten, probably paid, but like it was still essentially a tryout, and I smashed it so hard just knew that I'd smashed it and I ran backstage and when I noticed like the opening act was in the toilet the MC was on stage uh, Simon Evans who, who was headlining who obviously like that was a massive thing for me as well because I was on the same bill as him and I, mm. he was one of the ones that inspired me because he was so funny when I saw him at uh, Funny Bunnies in South but funny enough Funny Bunnies that, that was run at the time by two guys that I didn't know mm. who are now two of my best friends uh, which is lovely mm. uh, because of comedy so yeah, so Simon Evans was outside learning his show, and so there's no one else around, and I just ran back and just looked, did high kicks and punched the air, and it's like yeah, mm-hmm. and that was uh, it's probably the best I've ever. Great. So yeah, so that's cool. But I've also had a couple of really nice gigs recently. Mm. Again, glasses, I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm just like I say, I'm on a, I'm on a bit of a high, but like I went and did the uh, the tryout night at downstairs at King's Head, mm. which I've done like a couple of times before, but that. In particular, I was like live editing my set because people were just laughing for too long. Mm. <laughs> and I was like, right, I've got to cut that joke out mm-hmm. and that joke. And that one will still work. And I've done the setup for that, so mm-hmm. I need to do the callback later. And mm. I was just like, oh, I felt nice. so, I just felt really confident. It's a lovely gig, that. Just, yeah. It's a lovely gig, that. Great. And uh, another one the other day, which is, uh, again, it's downstairs at the theatre that I used to work at. There's a joke in my set, I don't know if you remember it, it's the uh, anthropomorphised animals. In the book. Yeah, kids stories, yeah. yeah. And I was doing that and I complete I just I blanked on the I've done it about four hundred times and I forgot I just blanked on the setup and I just ended up like chatting to some of the audience and like just going into them and like just ripped some of them apart and like I was just and I felt alive and like and I, and I brought mm. it back in the end and I was I was just like I was so excited but like everyone was just 
just in the palm of my hands. So great. I was like, I'm fucking That's gone. great. That's a nice And one. I just, I came off being like, I think I might be the best comedian in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, then, and then you have another gig and like, you know, then you have another gig that just brings you right back down. Yeah, 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 That's yeah. it. So, what, so what's the next plan then, Simon? What's the what's size plan? What's um, plan? Well, because I've not managed to get to Edinburgh, mm. like I say, well, I say like I say, because I said it earlier on, on my podcast, we recorded the Comedian's Tea Party, yeah. uh, which is my podcast beforehand and uh, Winter was a guest on that which is, is doing very well. We drink tea and we just chat and it's a lovely oh, time. And um, it's funny, whenever I'm doing anything that sort of resembles a plug, I look at the recorder and stop That's making right. eye contact with you because I'm like, I'm talking to you now. It's the audience. Yeah. The audience. So, uh, yeah, listen to the Comedian's Tea Party because it's, it's really good, to be honest. It's going really well. Uh, yesterday, I had my first ever live record with Stuart Goldsmith of the right. Comedian's Tea Party. I'll, just, I'll, leave you, I'll leave you and the audience together there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come and see. Come on. Um, but, yeah, so and you're having and having Rich Wilson on my point, and, yeah, and Rich Wilson, yeah. and I've got Bobby Mayer coming on, and uh, Laura Lex, and Diane Spencer, and, like some yeah, brilliant acts uh, coming on. Uh, Carl Donnelly was the first guest, and like uh, there's been loads of other really mm. great guests as well. Really, really good chats. It's, yeah, it's cool, man. I'm having a really good time doing that. So like, I'm trying to use that to sort of build my profile yeah, a little yeah, bit, yeah. and I want to use that to if anyone's interested. So my show that I'm doing at Camden Fringe on August the 11th at 8pm at Camden Comedy Club, uh, my show is called Size Matters, and it's very funny. I'm having a really good time with that. It's getting really good uh, reception. But basically, I want to... Because, because I'm looking back at you now. Uh, because, yeah, okay. because it's not going to Edinburgh. Yeah. And like I could take it to Edinburgh next year, but I've already got two other shows mm. that I'm halfway through writing for next year. So... Mm. I, I kind of want to sort of get this show done and mm. so I, I want to do a little tour so I'm going to take it to wherever I can like little rooms like mm. little sort of art centres or whatever like anyone that will sort of promote it for me because I'm busy so little art centres I want to do a living room tour so I want to go around to people's living rooms anywhere that can get like minimum 10 people up to you know whatever 50 but no mm. I mean hey if you live in a mansion I will do a gig to yeah, a thousand yeah. people that's mm. fine but if anyone wants me to come to their living room to come and do a gig, I'll, I'll come and do my show, and then Winter will also come, and we'll, we'll yeah, do, we'll do a tour shows. together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, then get in touch on any of my social media platforms. Sort of on Facebook, just search Saeed Comedy, and that'll come up, because I, I, I can't remember the actual URL. But on Twitter and Instagram, it's just at Saeed so do that. But if you do particularly want me to come to your house... It's sideeves at gmail.com and just drop me an email. I'll come and talk. Just promise me that you'll get enough people there, offer to at least pay for my fuel, mm. and, uh, and I'm, uh, I'm, I'm golden. I'll do that. So I want to tour that and then I'm going to record it and release it on like sort of YouTube or v- mm. Vimeo or something like that. Great. And then I'm going to finish the next show. <laughs> yeah, great. So you're doing comedy five years, you can model ourselves on things. This question it doesn't always get a good answer. Okay. It doesn't always land this question, but right. I like to ask the question anyway. I'll give it a go. So, like, what if you were to see yourself as some sort of uh, job in comedy? Right. Like, what would you see yourself as? Like, you, know, you could see a, for like some sort of builder or some kind. What would you see? Yourself? Okay. Like, you know, I mean, build it. You know, your own take on that. Yeah. Oh, crap. I'm like, I would like to think of, as I'm like a, I'm like a Ronin. A Ronin. A Ro- Ronin. Ronan, Ronan, like a samurai. Like, like the you, like, shoo, you take like you just like a samurai you walk around. Right. Sorry, I thought you meant like Ronan the Destroyer. Like, ro- like a bit, maybe a bit like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Conan the Destroyer. Yeah. No, Ronan. Ronan from Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy. Don't know that one. Oh, the, one? the blue guy with the big hammer. Oh, blue guy. No, no, not like him. But no, no, yeah. like, but like you know, like Ronan, like as as a samurai. He was like great, wasn't he? But anyway, so you're like, the one with the bloody Marvel yeah. placement. Yeah, he's isn't not he? on that. He's not on that. But I know he means though, but he's like Fury and guys, isn't he? Really, that's what he is, isn't he? Oh, uh, you've just said a word that I don't know now. One all, yeah. <laughs> right. But so, so let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> How do you see yourself? Like, Comedically, like persona, per, comedic, per, per, persona. in order to answer that question properly, I want to know. How you mean as like through some kind of some through kind of warrior is what through discipline? Yeah, yeah. Through sort of that's it. Some sort of warrior that you know, like a like a uh, a traveling. So you see yourself warrior. as someone that can sort of uh, like go into a room. You know, like pull, 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 out, pull out your weapon not, in, a, in a controlled manner. But not necessarily always do you have to do that. 
you don't right. always... Right, well, yeah, like, as I say, the, what is it, the greatest samurai lets the sword rust in the scabbard. Is, is that right? Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Because they don't have to get it out because exactly. they know they can win. Exactly. That's what I like to see myself as, like that, because the discipline of that. Yeah. Of just doing that. Like, so, like, a, so a wise... You've got the skills. Yeah. You've got so much. Oh. Sk- <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to hang me with this description now one day. By, like, oh, we're doing your rolling. Yeah. Okay, let's just see how you work the, with it. Uh, so. the, the way you describe that, mm. the person that has the skills that doesn't has, have to use them but yeah. can when they need to, sounds like Adam Blue. Yeah. Is, right. that, is that your sort of. Because he's got so many gears yeah. in comedy, like he can shift. To yeah. whatever he needs to be able mm. to do and get the job done, and yeah. he's incredible with it. Not to say I was like Alan Bloom, yeah, yeah, but like that. I mean, he's the amount of experience that man has got. He's got over twenty years' experience. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's incredible. You know, yeah, so yeah. I'm not gonna lie, I'm still not. We all know. Yeah, I'm it's, sure he'd say he was. To be fair, hmm. that's my demeanor. That's how I would see myself. I no, I get that moving towards. Yeah, it, you know, oh, I like it. So what yeah, would you be? What would I be? So I could be, because in my head. A comedy club that you're walking into is like a hotel and I was immediately trying to place myself within a hotel. Mm. I don't need to. I could be anything. It's a hard question. Some people think you model yourself on what would you... It's like a machine. The way... And this is a job that I used to do, so I think I kind of see it like that because I, I, I also developed some of my comedy chops this way. Mm. So I used to be a barman oh, yeah. in a bar that was like... It was a bit manic, but it was cool. So like... I got to keep my... I didn't really get rolled up by people. I just mm. like sort of keep my slow and confident mm. sort of persona, which is funny because obviously I'm confident at being awkward. So like I can... Mm. Because there's, I am awkward and like... And that's... I'm, I'm in no way ever going to try and deny that I'm an awkward person. Mm. But I'm, I'm fucking good at it. <laughs> um, so, there's power in that though. There's power yeah, in awkwardness. In being able to embrace yeah, your absolutely. thing. Yeah, absolutely. It's fun. Well, well, Not your thing. No, but no, well, if you want to make it even more hey, awkward, yeah. I mean, whatever you got to do, and it sometimes you just yeah. gotta just whip it out. That's a, no, it's already <laughs> been done. Uh, <laughs> it didn't go well. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just that one gig. You know, that's yeah. it. I'm uh, talking about Louis C.K. before. Oh uh, yeah, so, right, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've seen other people do it. it doesn't, yeah. yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But in fairness, yeah, his career is still doing okay, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying you should do that, but that's <laughs> no, you know, no. that's the thing. No, I've, it's an option. So, uh, like a bar like in, in, a, in a small bar that is small enough that basically like when I say it was a bit mad like we did sort of loads of cocktails and stuff uh, yeah but good <laughs> like not a, funny. not a weird creep and uh, if Tom, Tom Cruise if you're listening uh, I, I know full well that you can kick my ass so but please don't uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> I respect you I'm just it's just fun it's just fun mm-hmm. to, don't nobody tell Tom Cruise what I've said mm-hmm. um, does he listen? I don't know I'm not sure he used to I hope, he, I hope he doesn't. Yeah. I kind of. I hope he does, and I hope he. I hope he understands the jest in which that comment was meant. No. Weird, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so, like when I was when I was in that bar, hmm. like it was a sort of independently owned thing. Like, so if anybody came in and like sort of would give me shit, like I mean, it's not like a sort of like a chain bar. Hmm. Like I'm not worried about people being like, I'm going to tell your boss because my boss was like, do whatever you want to do. Yeah. So, like, if I wanted That's to tell someone to fuck off, I could tell them to fuck off. Mm-mm. And uh, I would. So, like, but mm. I'd still be there as that guy. And, like, I'd still... I used to take the most tips in that bar. Mm. Because people came in, they'd try and be clever. And I'd rip into them. And, like, sort of outsmart them. Which wasn't hard because they were slow moving targets because they were mm. pissed. But, like, I'd, just, I'd rip into them and they'd just be like, oh, oh, yeah, fair play, man. Or, like, kind of... Sometimes their mate would come in and like, be trying to be really big bollocks and uh, their friends would give me money mm. for ripping into that guy and bringing him down to like sort of great you know Destroying great, yeah yeah absolutely and like I, I really loved it and that was that's sort of what I feel like I could do like because in that scenario like I, when we were quiet I could hold a conversation and talk mm. about like sort of whatever weird things would pop into my head I'd be entertaining but mm. like I'd still be sort of like chilled out and relaxed and Sort of just making interesting drinks that taste mm. a bit fruity. You're not quite sure what they are, but they're good. And that's yeah. like that's what I like to think maybe my comedy could be. It's like it's a bit weird. Don't necessarily know what it is. And when I need to rip into someone and prove that I'm in charge, mm. I can do that. And that's mm-hmm. fine. And from an awkward person, it's just a surprise, isn't it? Absolutely. They're going, oh, fucking hell. I didn't realise this guy had a fucking edge to him like yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. ah that's it he didn't really expect that that's yeah. it yeah, great I once uh, conversed with um, uh, Chris Norton Walker in trying to decide what sort of comedy it was that I did 
and he said, oh, I think it's like Essex Whimsy. I was like, what? He mm. said, yeah, like kind of, you'd still fight someone, but you'd do it with a fish. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. Great. So the next mission is writing the shows, doing the tours, doing the theatre shows. And doing the, the is it the couch tour? Is it the couch? Is, I'm saying that right. There's the living room, living room tour. tour. Yeah, yeah, I like a couch, couch tour. Though. Couch, though. couch tour sounds good, right? I imagine a couch would be there. Mm, yeah. I hope so. And you're not doing the fringe this year. You're. Did you say you're getting married? No. Just the thought of no, buying, buying a house, house. With, with your missus. Yeah. Is more or less the same thing. It's probably more. It's, it's deeper than that. Yeah. It's, it's so I mean, we're, we're getting a joint mortgage together. So oh, yeah, that's that's really serious. Yeah, that yeah. Really serious. That's, that says I love you. What, for 25 years at least. yeah yeah <laughs> 35 years oh sorry 35 yeah, years yeah. wow you really went in the deep end of 35 yeah, yeah, years yeah. gotta really go for it find you at Sideeves uh, on all of the social media yeah Sideeves.com uh, is at Sideeves mm. which is spelt like leaves with a D yeah. uh, D-E-A-V-E-S S-I-D-E-A-V-E-S because uh, a lot of people spell spell Si with a Y it's short for Simon where does the Deeves come from uh, it's my surname. No, I know, but I know that. But where is it from? <laughs> I know your parents. Right? I know that's how it, mine came from. That as well. It's weird. Now there are two discussions on where that came from. Sure, it is either or potentially both. It's either Scottish or Portuguese. Right. And either way, it basically translates to loud noises. Ah. Which is quite funny because I used to be scared of loud noises when I was younger, ah. and then I became a, pro- a professional drummer. So, <laughs> so you, you embraced the fear, yeah. and destroyed it, and became. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now I've embraced it. my awkwardness and on stage. You're a drum man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry. Thank you for coming on Calm Defect. Thanks man. so much for having me on, man. No, that's a pleasure. Thanks for coming on my podcast, the, the Comedians Tea Party. The Comedians Tea Party. <laughs> awesome. I was on. It was fun. Thanks, man. Nice one. Thanks, man. And we were shaking hands, and yeah, we were exploding. Exploding. Exploding spud. Right. Nice one. And that was episode 77 of the Comedy Defect podcast. 77. We did 77. Lucky number seven. And two sevens. So double the luck, maybe. Like in China. More than one eight. Good luck. What does 77 mean? I don't know. Two sevens doesn't mean anything. If you know anything about numerology, let me know what it means, if it means anything at all. (laughs) Maybe it's just a number. Maybe it is just a number. But hey, we're 23 away from 100. When we get to 100, what are we going to do? We'll keep going, probably. If you want to donate to the podcast, you can. You can donate as much or as little as you want. Don't worry about it. I know everyone's asking for money at the moment because things are difficult for everyone. Don't worry about it. If you can't, just share your favourite episode, tell your friends, or leave us a nice review. Uh, You can also... Do you know what you can do? You can also just email me uh, and also tell me who you'd like to have on the podcast. Maybe a friend of yours is a comedian, been going a few years... Uh, or, you know, you want to have someone else back on the show again that we've had on already, you want to ask them some more different questions, you can email me, and that is thecomedydefect at gmail.com. That is thecomedydefect at gmail.com. I say I'm really sorry for the lateness of this episode. I just got really busy with things. It's my birthday at the start of the month, and also all the acting and the voiceover stuff just kind of took off this month. It was really great. You know, I, I really can't complain. I'm blessed. It's all going well. Doing some comedy shorts. I'm just loving it at the moment. And I've also, that gig in the Henderson's Hub, it's happening on the 13th of October at half past seven. The doors open and the show is at eight. It's going to be just straight through. There's going to be no breaks for two hours. I'll get the acts on straight away and then we're going to have a great time. The amazing set of Graham is opening and the incredible Sean Mio is closing. We've got Joshua Manison in the middle and we're going to have another uh, middle spot there too. That spot has not been designated yet. That is episode 77 of this podcast. Next month is Jason Stamp, the comedy mafioso who is taking over Cambridge and towns near you. He's got a comedy club called Big Deal Comedy. He's gone everywhere, man. He's a really great guy, a really good friend of mine. He was very generous to give an hour or so of his time so we could chat about comedy. That is episode 78 at the end of September. It will be on time the last Wednesday of the month. Until then, take it easy, take care, and uh, try not to lose your minds, okay? 